Okay, so it looks like everything's live. I'm going to get straight in to launching some Z-Wolf uh, again on the Vampire V4. So we're on Virtual Amiga. Well, no, Real Amiga, um, except FPGA implementation. And as with um, Cannon Fodder and Project X, I've chosen a game that's got awesome music. The uh, music is by uh, a guy called Alistair Brimble who um, has done loads of game music and is still uh, still a composer for uh, game music as far as I'm aware. Right, nice, we're in. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is play this properly. You can play this on the uh, with a joystick. Fully not recommended in the slightest. Uh, much better game with the mouse because you get much finer control. It's very hard to learn to play with the mouse, but it is a better game for it. Um, let's get into it. My guess is that the um, people who wrote this game, Binary Asylum, wanted to do an Airwolf game uh, and either couldn't or didn't get the rights to um, uh, to Airwolf and so just like reskinned as Z-Wolf. So this mission I have to destroy my own tanks and destroy uh, everybody else's tanks. Uh, when I say everybody else's, um, the sort of dystopian cyberpunk future in this game is that uh, the like world's militaries in the near future are run by um, by oil companies. So, you know, I, the Stringfellow Hawk character, the sort of um, helicopter pilot, I'm a mercenary, uh, but I've been hired by the small oil company, ergo the good guys, um, to protect their interests against the evil mega corporation that is the uh the the big oil company aka the bad guys there are two um z wolf games like the uh second one has very similar game engine you know few refinements a little bit better i think the second one um sort of scales its performance better on different hardware like the uh, Z-Wolf was definitely a game that should run on any Amiga from like the 500 you know, maybe the 1000 I don't know um, and definitely is a game that benefits from having a faster Amiga I've got a feeling that Z-Wolf 2 um, sort of like does less on the lower Amigas so that you get a uh, you know, more consistent performance. So now I've got to just like fly around the map and find these other tanks. The red dots are uh, enemy vehicles. I'm not actually that awesome at shooting. Uh, there's a certain amount of auto aiming. I just sort of take, the, take out that tree to kind of demonstrate what happens if I'm not being supported by the auto aim but I've got three types of weapons the rockets are much more explosive uh, but they don't um, don't auto aim anywhere near as precisely and the uh, air to air missiles which I don't have on this mission um, are like homing missiles so they're super great at aiming um, that the thing, and they're also very destructive. The thing is, you get many fewer of them, and you get a bonus for any rockets or um, uh, AAMs that you don't use at the end of the mission. I've got a feeling. So the world wraps. Uh, that's another thing to know about Sea Wolf. The world wraps around, and I've got a feeling that that is the one I destroyed before. So I've got no idea where this third uh, enemy tank is. So what I've put at the bottom of the um, 
of the screen on here is A, my Twitter handle, uh, and B, uh, Dose Amigans, which is the stream that I regularly run on a Thursday with SR Baker, um, which where we stream developing software for the Amiga. Now, we haven't done anything quite as fancy as... Um, uh, as Zwolf yet, uh, in fact. Uh, we're kind of at the command line tool re level. So that should be it. That should be mission over. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, you can see that I got unused weapons bonus for not using the rockets. Ah, I've seen a problem. I had the audio coming out of both my microphone and the um, the Amiga because I had the Amiga coming through a hi-fi that's on my desk. So let's turn that off. That should be better. Okay, rescue two POWs. What, what we'll find is... Well, let, let's just play the mission and find out. There's still a little bit of the sound bleeding through, um, which must be coming through my headphones, which is unfortunate because these should A, be good headphones, and B, I shouldn't have the volume up that loud. Okay, so it's always worth destroying the enemies before you try to uh, liberate the people in the building, so otherwise you have people shooting at you on the ground while you're uh, while you're trying to save them. So I've got the right mouse button gives me a little bit of turbo like the airwolf helicopter and I'm using that when I land I bring the helicopter down because it the rotors slow down when the gears are down but then you can like smash into the ground if you do if you land too hard so I use the um, the turbo button like that, uh, which uses fuel faster. Obviously, uh, I use that just to um, moderate the speed of the helicopter as it's landing. Now I'm actually going to go over and save the other two guys because, as you saw from the end of mission one, the mission finishes like shortly after you complete the objectives, and as the objective is save two people, if I don't um, pick up the other people that would be game over and I wouldn't get any credit at all for doing this as it is I'm pretty sure that I won't get any credit for saving them because as soon, like I say as soon as I save two that will be the end of the mission and the other two won't have time to get out of the helicopter so the folks see where the um, helicopter is and they uh, go over and land they go over and to where it's landed So now if I was paying attention correctly, I should be able to discover that the um, my aircraft carrier is over here, which is where I need to take them. Yep, there it is. It kind of comes up as a collection of dots because they went for the craft equals dot thing and then made a massive craft. See, there's a yellow dot here. Let's show you what that looks like on in the game. That's the refueling uh, carrier. So I could get some more fuel and get some more weapons, or I could crash into the satellite dish, or well, the radar dish. Uh, I what I want to do is not either of those things. What I want to do is land over here, which is oops. And there you see I did land too hard and smashed into the ground. Luckily this is a very resilient helicopter. So my dudes are going to come out and you can see they come out very infrequently. So the race is on between person 3 getting in after the mission finishes for me to get the points. And he did. But I didn't get the points for that fourth one. So he finally rescued 3 even though the fourth guy was on the tarmac on the aircraft carrier.
Okay, so this is an escort mission. I start here. It's never made clear why I start nowhere near the carrier. But I have to escort that thing around. Uh, around this enemy base. What I'm going to do is not do that. I'm going to go over here and destroy everything. And then take the escort. Because it's much easier to escort something that isn't being shot at than something that is being shot at. See, there's anti-aircraft guns here. And tanks. This would all harsh my spotter planes mellow if I let them... Uh, if I let it fly over. I suppose we're now having a, you know, a reasonable discussion of like, uh, you know, f the philosophy of science or the, yeah, the philosophy of science and the observer effect. Ah, there's a helicopter. Definitely don't want that flying around like computer controlled following just following my route don't have any weapons playing but you know in quantum physics you say that like the act of um, observing the system changes the system and what we're doing now is destroying everything in a base so that uh, a plane can fly over and see what is at the base like the answer is nothing because I've gone and taken it all out Badly with my rubbish aim. So, I mean, this is a game that I played a lot as a kid. Okay, well, it's possible that I've missed some stuff, but like basically the base doesn't have anything in it anymore, so I'm just going to go and fly the dude around. Um, yeah, like, this is a game I played a lot as a child, um, because, you know, it's a... It, it's a good bit of fun, and um, it does get hard quite quickly. Uh, so, you know, I'm definitely playing the introductory, this is how you control things, and these are the things that can happen uh, levels. But, it's, you know, it, it, it gets harder quicker as, as you get into the later levels. Um, and it's good fun. And then, like the second game, Z Wolf Two: Wild Justice, added a bunch of extra um, complexity. So there's like remote control vehicles where you can uh, like land and connect to a tank, and then you can can control another tank that's somewhere else on the map. So now that I'm here, he knows to take off. As I've mentioned before, headphones and Amiga is not always a great combination. I've got left ear helicopter rotors, right ear wind noise. Well, it might be supposed to be engine noise, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to which ear... See, now I've lost him because I was. I, I, I spent a long time turning that corner. Uh, all of the, like, jets in this are VTOL, and I think that may just be so that they could use helicopter physics for the jets as well. But I can, you know, crash into or shoot this guy. Which would not help me achieve the mission, so I might not want to do it. Well, looks like someone's been over here and trashed their helicopter. And their buildings, and their tanks, and their anti-aircraft emplacements. Why didn't you just hire the helicopter pilot to do the reconnaissance mission, and take out all the things? rather than hiring the jet pilot 
as well as a helicopter. I mean, this is a really expensive way to do this mission. Also, where are you trying to go? So that's quite interesting. Even the pilot of the computer aircraft knows that the uh, the world wraps around and uses that in his flight path. I've got no air to go now, so I may as well just conserve fuel by uh, waiting for him to land. Okay, so in this case I have to rescue two ships and only one of them can fly. Which means I'm going to you know, do the standard thing of uh, going to the end of the mission first and shooting down everything I see and then going and picking up the craft. So this thing has a, um, a hook, which is how we're going to be able to pick up that second craft. You can see that the auto, the auto aiming isn't great. It'll only sort of aim at things when you're vaguely pointing at it. And then it will, you know, it will sometimes be like weirdly specific and will, uh, you know, carry on aiming at something even if like you're pointing in almost the opposite direction. But sometimes you can be pointing straight at something and it will decide, nope, I don't want to give you an exact bead on that. I'm going to let you miss. Now I don't know much about driving tanks, but I think it's probably faster to drive them on the road than on the grass. there's not much point being right next to the road. Also, if you've got all these tanks and you see a massive armed helicopter coming in to like smash up your dudes, why wouldn't you just go back and shoot the other uh, aircraft? Okay, so here are the two craft. That one has its engine running and that one doesn't. So, I mean, I would just fly back the straight line way, but the trick is going to be that that guy wouldn't. So that was quite problematic. Like, as soon as I hooked that thing up, I dropped like a stone. I had to use the turbo. And you've got to account for these pilots being idiots. Like, yeah, we're flying to an aircraft carrier that's just over on, in the sea. And he flies through the enemy base to get there. So that's why I took everything out before going and picking him up. These, uh, like, autopilot or, like, non-player car carrier craft, the ones on my team don't actually have any AI. They will, they, they will just, like, drive on their pre-programmed route, even though... Evidently, that is how they're going to get shot at. So he's just flown past literally everything that we just took out. Had we not taken it out, he would have just flown you know, through an armed enemy base. Even though if he'd gone left, he could have gone through the water and relied on the world wrapping around to avoid all that. <sighs> I 
And then he's going to go out here, apparently, to find a route to the landing pad. Okay, now I've got to drop this other one off, and it's kind of flying, flailing all over the place. So what I tend to do here is I use my landing gear to slow the helicopter down. And I'm not allowed to let go because this thing's waving all over the place. So I've got to wait until this all comes back under control. It's only when it's vaguely quiescent that I'll actually be allowed to let go. So that's the piloted one down. Yeah, that, that beep is me pressing the button to release the hook and being told, nope. Still not. Now this is quite uh, frustrating now because like this is basically just like uh, slowing things down. There we go. Is there actually anyone in? Yes, hello Lurks. Right, so this is the password you use to get to level 5. Uh, so I can't actually... like the, the game doesn't have Destroy Fusion Reactor. The game has Destroy Everything Else and then will claim that you knocked out the reactor. Uh, now the sharks are the patrol boats, they're quite um, awkward. I've got to rescue these guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the um, patrol boats because they are very fast. They are mobile. And they shoot quite quickly and accurately. So what I'm going to do is try and take them out of rockets. As you can see, the rockets are incredibly inaccurate. So this is a lot of money being spent on blowing up these boats. You can hear the engine noise of the boats through the right channel. That extra kind of motor hum is supposed to be the boats. Okay, so that's the patrol boats done. Now, I'm not going to do the uh, anti-aircraft guns yet. What I'm going to do first is save the people so that I get the bonus for saving all four of them.
there's a helicopter or something in the middle. Yeah. Pays to take out the helicopters before they take off. Now obviously in, in real terms this is a risky way to do this mission because what I'm going to do is pick up the people and then like fly around an armed base with uh, you know with like civilians or whoever in my helicopter but that kind of is the way that uh, the game works best so that is what I'm going to do Um, if you're wondering why on the screen there's like a massive half the screen at the bottom that's not used, it's because there's a massive half the screen at the bottom that's not used. Like even on the um, the Amiga screen, uh, there it just is a gap at the bottom that the graphics aren't being drawn into. Now, I wonder whether it's um, an NTSC game that I'm playing in PAL, and so there's a bar at the bottom, or whether they just realised that they couldn't. Like update the whole screen and keep a good frame rate and so they um, made the viewport smaller. Whichever way it is, uh, so that patrol boat up there that on the top left corner of the map isn't one that I had to um, destroy for the mission which means that it still exists. Anyway, there there is just like you know, I'd say that the the game screen takes up like uh, three quarters horizontally of the Amiga screen, and two like only two thirds vertically, and the re the rest is black. So um, obviously, I've got a black background on my OBS, uh, you know, on the on the stream, which is why uh, you know it just looks like uh, it's in the middle of the void. Um, but nonetheless, uh, like there's not a whole lot going on. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, just live edit, make myself take up the same size as the chat. Marvellous. Do love the sound of my own voice and the look of my own face, as you can probably tell from uh, this stream. Okay, so now I can fly back and finish off the mission. Uh, but I should land and drop these guys off first. Which means trying to remember where my carrier is. I can't remember on the, on the map. Okay, so there's another shark. Oh, the top of the map is one that I didn't destroy. Oh, there's another thing entirely as well. Mm hmm. Random tank on an island. <clears throat> and another shark. Thing to do is just not bother them. Right, where's my carrier? Oh, and another random thing on an island. There's the carrier. I'm going to go and take this thing out first, though. So there are lots of patrol boats in this uh, universe that aren't actually part of the mission objective. Makes you wonder what was special about the the like ones that are near the fusion reactor. Also, like I said before, like this is a an oil company. If they've got a fusion reactor, why are they an oil company? Why don't they just stop competing on oil and go like entirely into fusion? None of this makes any sense. Right, so they are all in, and now I can... Uh, actually, I may as well refuel while I'm here.
And now I don't have any uh, mouse or keyboard input and the animations that are supposed to be happening are not happening, which makes me think that um, I have crashed my uh, vampire. I've quit the game, but that's not, that's not great, like if all I can do is exit. Um, well, okay, sorry, but that was where um, yeah, I was running this off WHD load and perhaps there's like a compatibility problem. Uh, I'll try and sort that out for another time, um, but I guess that's where we call it a stream. Sorry, folks, and um, well, hopefully see you again sometime.